let us look at application of various types of progression. We will start with arithmetic progression first. Let us look at an example. See, seventh term of an arithmetic progression is 7 and sum up to 14 terms is 91. If it is given that the sum of first 28 terms is k times 28th term, find k. Now, we have a lot of unknown variables here. We don't know this first term, we don't know the difference. Hence, we will have to first find out first term and the common difference. If you look at the first information that we have, that seventh term is 7. So, can I say a plus 6d is equal to 7? And sum up to 14 terms is 91. Hence, 14 by 2, that is 7, into bracket 2a plus n minus 1 times d, that means 2a plus 13d is equal to 91. Now, if I cancel 7 on both the side, I will be left with 2a plus 13d is equal to 13. I already had an equation a plus 6d is equal to 7 and 2a plus 13d is equal to 13. So, if I find this out, if I solve both these equations, I will get d as minus 1. So, if my d is minus 1, that means a plus 6d is equal to 7. So, a will be nothing but 13. Now, coming to the second part of the question where it is mentioned that sum up to 28 terms is equal to k times 28th term. So, sum up to 28 terms will be 28 by 2 that is 14 into bracket 2a plus 27d that is equal to k times 28th term. 28th term will be a plus 27d. Now, we know a, we also know d. If we replace the value of a as well as d in this entire equation and solve this, we will get value of k as 1. Second question, if we have a series, say first term is minus 30, second term is minus 119 by 4, third term is minus 118 by 4 and so on, we are supposed to find out the first positive term. Now, if we observe carefully, this is also an arithmetic progression where first term instead of 30, I can write it as minus 120 upon 4. Second term is already minus 119 upon 4. Third term is minus 118 upon 4. So, the progression over here is that the series is increasing by 1 by 4. So, if my first term is minus 30, that means I will have at least 120 terms to reach 0. If I have 120 terms to reach 0, then 0th term will be 121, that is 121st term and the first positive term will be 122. Hence, your answer will be 122. Application of geometric progression also will be very interesting. Here, we will find some of the very challenging questions. Let us take an example. There is a ball which is dropped from the height of 120 meters. Now, it bounces back to 4 fifth of its height. It keeps on bouncing till it comes to the resting position and we are supposed to find out the total distance that a ball travels. Now, if you try observing carefully, the first time when ball is dropped, it is only one time that it travels from a height of 120 to 0. Now, when it bounces back to 4 fifth of its height, so 4 fifth that means 4 fifth of 120 which is 96. So it will go up 96 meters and it will again come back 96 meters. Hence the distance travelled will be 192 meters. Now this process will continue. So next time when the ball bounces up, it will bounce up 4 fifth of 96 and then again it, it will go down 4 fifth of 96 and so on. So, here the series or the progression starts after the first 120 meter is over. So, if I take my first term to be 192 and the common ratio to be 4 by 5, my series will continue till infinity because the bounces at the last stage will be almost negligible and cannot be considered. Hence, the series will tend to infinity. So, my sum of geometric progression of infinite terms 
as we know that definition is a upon 1 by r. Now here first term is 192 and upon 1 minus r that is 1 minus 4 by 5. So 192 upon 1 by 5 which will give me 960 meters. Now 960 meters is the distance travelled by ball after it is dropped from the first bounce of 120 meters. So the total distance travelled by a ball will be 960 meters plus 120 meters that is 1080 meters. Another classic example of application of geometric progression will be in the help of geometrical figures. Let us take an example where we have a square of units dimension 4 by 4. Now if we join the midpoints of the square, we will get another square inside the original square. If we keep on doing this process infinite number of times, we will keep on getting infinite number of squares. Here we are supposed to find out the area of all these squares put together. Now when we look at the areas of first square and second square, it will form a particular ratio. Let us look at the area of first square. If the dimension is 4 by 4 units, the area of first square will be 16 units. Now when we try to find out the side of the second square, the side of second square will be 2 root 2 because the midpoints will form a triangle, small triangle where both the sides will be 2 and 2. So if the adjacent sides and base is 2 and 2, the hypotenuse will be 2 root 2. Hence the side of the inside square will be 2 root 2 and area of the inside square will be 2 root 2 the whole square which will be nothing but 8. So if we observe the ratio from first square to second square, the ratio comes down to half. So 16 to 8. Now this process will keep on going till infinity. Hence, if we try to add the area of all the possible squares so formed, it can be defined with the help of sum of infinite geometric progression that is a upon 1 minus r. Now here a will be 16 and r is half. So 16 upon 1 minus half that is 16 upon half that is equal to 32 units. Hence the sum of all the areas of all the possible squares so formed will be 32 units. Now the most challenging aspect of progression that is AGP arithmetic and geometric progression combined. Let us look at a question and see how we can handle such questions. The question here is we are supposed to find out the summation of a series which says 1 plus 2 into 2 to the power 1 plus 3 into 2 to the power 2 plus 4 into 2 to the power 3 and so on till 100 into 2 to the power 99. Now if we observe this series we will see that the partial term forms an arithmetic progression whereas second half of the term forms a geometric progression. Such a series is known as AGP or arithmetic and geometric progression combined. How do we handle such series? Let us assume the summation of the entire series as say k. So if k is equal to 1 plus 2 into 2 to the power 1 plus 3 into 2 to the power 2 and so on, can I also say 2k that is twice the value of this will be equal to 2 plus 2 to the power 2 into 2 to the power 1 plus 3 into 2 to the power 2 and so on. If I keep both these equations simultaneously and subtract 2k from k, I will get 1. Then look at the second term of first observation 2 into 2 to the power 1 and the first term of second series that is 2k that is 2. So 2 into 2 to the power 1 minus 2, I can get, take out 2 common and I will be left with 2 minus 1. Same is the case with third term of first series that is 3 into 2 to the power 2 and second term of the second series that is 2 into 2 to the power 2. Again I can take out 2 square common and I will be left with 3 minus 2 which is 1. So if I keep on doing like this, I will get 99 terms which will form a geometric progression from second term onwards. Now second term will be 2 to the power 1, third term will be 2 to the power 2, fourth term will be 2 to the power 3 and so on till 2 to the power 99. But there is a catch. 
look at the last term of second series that is 2k the last term of second series is 100 into 2 to the power 100 now this will be unutilized and will be subtracted in the new series that is minus k as it is so if i look at the value now after subtracting 2k from k we will get minus k on left hand side and on right hand side we will get 1 minus 2 to the power 1 2 to the power 2 minus 2 to the power 3 and so on till 2 to the power 99 this will form a geometric progression of 100 terms from 2 to the power 0 to 2 to the power 99 this can also be expressed if you remember the formula of summation of geometric progression it is a into 1 minus r to the power n upon 1 minus r so here a is the first term which is 1 into bracket 1 minus r r will be 2 so 1 minus 2 to the power 100 upon 1 minus 2 which is again 1 so first part of this series will be nothing but 1 minus 2 to the power 100 minus 100 into 2 to the power 100 so i can take out 2 to the power 100 common and i'll be left with 100 minus 1 which is 99 so i'll be getting minus 1 minus 99 into 2 to the power 100 if i look at my left hand side i was getting minus k so if i want to find out the value of k which was the summation of my original series i'll have to change the signs if i change the signs i'll get k is equal to 1 plus 99 into 2 to the power 100 so we've seen the most important and challenging concepts in the application of progression i hope the discussion was helpful to you thank you